What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nate. Today, we are talking about a brand new AI model called Flux Uno, and it's perfect for product mockups, consistent fashion designs, and object-specific scenes. What's really cool about this model is that not only is it super powerful and it runs really fast, but it is also completely free to use. So today, we're gonna be diving in. I know you're super excited. I am too. All right, let's go. Here is the brand new workflow that we just released. It's called Black Mixtures Flux Uno, which if you guys are curious what it's good for, it's reference guided image generation for product mockups and more. But I will say that the Flux Uno model, if you guys do look it up online, you're gonna probably see its GitHub page, which it was created by ByteDance, you know, the same owners of TikTok. And what's really cool about this model is that you can not only get to run it on Hugging Face right here, even though you're gonna get limited generations, but you're gonna be able to download it by following the links right here to run it inside of your computer without any restrictions whatsoever. And right here, we have a Game Boy Color as the reference image over here on the left. And we're able to generate this video, which was actually using a combination of this Flux Uno model and then also animating it with WAN 2.1. So we're able to make some pretty awesome things by combining these multiple models and ComfyUI workflows to really fine tune a result. What's awesome about this is that not only does it retain the consistency of the shape of the object, but it's actually that same green Game Boy Color. It has the logo right there, it has the correct placement for the buttons, the speaker grill and everything. So yeah, this model is really powerful. If you guys wanna get your hands on this right away, it's super easy to install. So first thing is that you're gonna to need to Git clone this repository into your custom nodes folder in ComfyUI. If you're using the ComfyUI portable, you go over here and then once you click into ComfyUI, you're gonna be able to then see where you have custom nodes. A really awesome shortcut is to click on the folder right here and then type in CMD and instantly a command prompt window is gonna pop up already in that directory. So then you can go over to the Patreon page copy and paste in this code into your terminal window just like that and you're going to see it automatically download and install that if you guys are having trouble using that we're also going to be having a zip file which you guys can download right here it's also going to be linked at the very bottom of this patreon page if you unzip it and then just drag and drop this folder into your custom nodes directory it's also going to install that custom node just like that now the next thing that you're going to need is also this Laura file, which we're gonna have a link to that as well, both on the Patreon page for you to download, or if you wanna get it directly from the Hugging Face as well, you can do that, but you're just gonna need to rename it just to make it work a little bit better on your computer. It's just gonna be this 1.91 gigabyte file. And then you're also gonna need the Flux Dev model, which is what this is based on, and the VAE for this. So here, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you load up that workflow. This is exactly what it looks like. And just like all of our previous workflows, they read from left to right and they're color-coded with steps to make it easy to understand. So over here in the step one section, we have load image and models. So this is where you're gonna have your reference image. At the bottom is where all of your models are gonna live. So here we have the Flux model. We're using Flux 1 Dev FP8 E4 M3 FN, which is a really long mouthful to say, but it is a awesome model, which is a nice quantized version of Flux so that it can run on most GPU setups. And then we're also using this AE model, which is the AE.safe tensors file. And we're going to be leaving the use FP8 and offload set to true, which at their defaults is going to make sure that it runs on most GPU setups using consumer hardware. If you guys are curious where to get any of those files, we also have on the right hand side the important notes and download links. Here we have that diffusion model file. You can just drag and drop this into your browser and here you're going to be able to see where to download that model. It's about 11.9 gigabytes and you're going to want to place it inside of your ComfyUI diffusion models folder and then your VAE model or AE.safe tensors file you can also get right here and place inside of your VAE folder. So let's go back to an example so you guys can see here is the Game Boy Color example and essentially all that we needed to do was import in this image then set up the models and the LoRa. We want to make sure to use the Uno LoRa at safe tensors which is that special 
version of this model that allows it to use these very specific object references. And then over here in the step two column, you're going to see our prompt and generation settings. So here we can type in our prompt. You're actually going to notice that I misspelled Nintendo in this example, but I just wanted to show you that even with that misspelling, it came out perfectly fine. And then over here, we're going to have our default width, height, and guidance and our pick your add-on section. Now, if you guys are curious to get a little bit more into some of the nitty gritty of these settings, the number of steps that I've at least played around with and tested above 30 steps, I started to notice a little bit of over-processing or over-inferencing on this image. Just something to keep in mind, the more number of steps does not actually mean a better image. And then another thing that you guys can play around with is the guidance. So here we have it set to 4.5. Some examples of different workflows online have it set to four but I found that 4.5 helped it adhere better to the object that was being referenced. Now, another thing that you're gonna notice is that the generation settings are set to 1024 by 1024. And depending on your hardware, you can either lower this down a little bit, but I found that this was a pretty good value to keep it at. And of course our seed we have set to randomize. And for the most part, you don't have to mess with this PE value, which is set to default for D. Now we do have another option here which is the enable compare images. Essentially what this is going to do is it's going to activate this second part of the workflow over here, which lets us make those really nice comparison images. Like you can see down below to where you're able to see your reference image and also your resulting image on the right hand side. So already this is pretty awesome, but I want to show you guys a little bit of some of the examples so you can understand how this model is supposed to be used and what it's really great for. So in this example, you already saw that we're able to take this Game Boy Color, pop it into a pile of green leaves, and then later on, I ran this image through WAN 2.1 to animate it. If you guys are also curious where to get WAN 2.1, we have a link right here inside of the Patreon, which takes you to our 2.1 workflows. Now, the reason why I didn't put these together as just one workflow was because the inferencing would just take too long, and sometimes you're not really sure what image it is that you like. So I think it's really better to segment this out separately so that we're not working with a monstrously large workflow and instead have something nice and clean. So that's why we're keeping this separate over here and you can just generate as many images in context that you want of a specific object and then port it over to this image to video workflow and get some awesome results like the one that we have here in our example. So here you can see the reference image, the Flux Uno image, and then the animated image video right here at the bottom. So over here, I have an example of the Starbucks logo. And in the prompting section, I have a photo of a woman wearing a green shirt. The shirt has a logo on it, model photography. Now notice that I didn't specify what was the logo specifically, or if it was a Starbucks logo or anything like that. And the resulting image came out perfectly where we have the logo right there on the shirt. And a little bit interesting is that it even added a TM at the bottom here, which I think is because we put the logo and maybe just with a different prompting or a different seed, we might get a version without that TM there. But other than that, it was able to capture just about all of the minute details that are very specific to the logo, like the fact that the crown is made up of these four spikes here, and then it has this star at the very top. And if we look over at the logo here, it is exactly how it is supposed to be, which if you guys have messed around with inferencing on different models before using a reference image, some things may not come out as well. And we even have the proper amount of strands of hair, which is three on each side. And over here, you can also see we have that exactly copied over. So this is a really impressive result that I was very happy with. Now, moving on to another example, here we have one with an object that for sure is not in any of the trained models. You're not gonna find an AI model that has multiple pictures of this. So here we have this object as its reference image, and then we just have the prompt as an object is on a wooden table, and bam, it's able to actually make that same object on the table with the same exact kind of texture, as well as this very specific shape. Now it did take a little bit of liberties by adding in an indent here, but again, if we just prompted this a little bit more specifically, or if we even tried multiple images, we might get a slightly better result. But already out of the gate, first try in about 30 seconds, this is a very impressive result. Now, moving on, here we have a Coca-Cola bottle. And again, if for the prompting, I did not specify Coca-Cola whatsoever. And so I just said the soda bottle is in snow surrounded by an icy environment. Now, unlike most Coca-Cola bottles, here we have a glass bottle one with a specific metal cap 
and we have a little bit of an older version of the logo as well. And I think this one knocked it out of the park. It has the correct cap. It has the glass. It even has the proper glass lip, the little width adjustment there right below the logo section. It copied that perfectly. And we also have the logo there with this perfectly inside of the snow. So yeah, this one is also an awesome result. I got to give it a 9 out of 10. Now, a little caveat that you might notice if you really zoom in extra, extra hard is that the copyright registration mark here at the end just looks like a little dot. It's not really legible, whereas on this one, you can see it says MR. But again, this is us zooming in at incredibly close up views. And for the most part, the way that this model works is that it's going to pre-process your image to a size of about 512 by 512. So if we zoom out, you can kind of see what the model is getting in as its reference. So this image is what it's probably getting versus something that is as minute and as specific as this one where we're zooming in by an incredible amount here. So just another thing to keep in mind. Another really cool thing about this generation is that in this older version of the Coca-Cola logo, we have this little accent mark right here which is very, very specific, and it actually captured that as well with the correct typography. So awesome job and really awesome result. And here you can even see how that comparing images works in the right-hand side when it's turned on. It generates this picture. And it also lets you do this nice scrub over effect, which helps you test out how your results came out. Here we have another example. This one, I fed it this uh, picture from our Black Mixture channel. And here we have uh, two parts of our logo. So here we have our word mark up at the top here. And then here we have a color spectrum at the bottom. And here I actually prompted it a little bit longer. I put a product photo of a black notebook on a wooden table. The notebook has the white text logo that reads black mixture. Below the logo is a color spectrum bar lining the bottom of the notebook. And I think this one also knocked it out of the park here where it really makes a nice product photo of this logo mock-up all in one go. And again, all of these generations are happening in about 30 seconds or so. So again, a great result here. And then this final example, this one is really testing just how detailed it could be and really pushing it to its limits. So here we have an image that was actually generated with AI really, really long time ago. So it looks great on its first glance, but there's a lot of micro details in this that, you know, don't make too much sense. Like, I'm not sure what this object is here. It looks like a hand kind of warped and, you know, some of this looks extra messy, but you can legibly see that it says Nate and Chriselle and it has these palm trees and it has this woman and uh, this figure of uh, me and Chrisel here. So it's a pretty interesting vinyl cover, even if some of the details are not perfectly great. And just testing this out, I put the vinyl record is in a recording store. And here we have the final result. And what's really impressive is that it has the Nate and Chrisel right there in the proper text, has the palm trees even has that weird shape here. It has most of the shapes, albeit some of the facial details are not exactly the same. So that's why I would not recommend this for character reference images. But for the most part, when it comes to the composition, capturing all of those micro details inside of the artwork, it did it amazingly well. Down to where it even has the white and pink on the vinyl record right there. And another cool thing is that we don't have object bleed either inside of this scene. So we have multiple vinyl covers here that don't look at all like our reference image. So I thought this was a really great example of pushing this model to its limits and really showing you how awesome this model works. Now, going forward, I also want to show you another quick example here, which is one in which it does not come out so well. So this was an example image that I generated, and this one is using Miley Cyrus and I wanted to actually make her in an astronaut uniform or something else, so really just seeing how well we can get the same character. And of course, as you can tell, this does not look like Miley Cyrus at all, but it is interesting to note that the model was great at copying her exact hairstyle and the exact dress that she's wearing. And yeah, so this is just one thing to keep in mind. It's great for copying styles like hairstyles, even fashion. It even tried to copy over the tattoo that's on her arm over here, but it did not capture the face and the actual person itself. So that's just another caveat for you guys to be aware of is that I wouldn't expect this model to work really well for consistent characters. And instead we have different models already up on the Patreon for doing things like that using something like Flux Redux or even IP adapters 
or even using just full on face swaps or Gemini. All of those are great options for having a consistent character. Whereas this model is much better for having consistent objects and consistent logos and things that are very specific of that nature. So anyways, this is going to be up on our Patreon for you guys to download. And all the instructions and ways to get started are going to be right there for you, making it nice and easy for you guys to get a nice head start in using this model. Now, this model is brand new, so of course there's going to be updates and we're going to be posting them here as well. So in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy creating. And if you guys make something awesome, do share it with us. We always love checking out all the amazing stuff from the community. We also have a Discord page where you guys can send us some of your work. Have us check it out. And I'm always enjoying checking out what other people have created. So this is something that someone made from Juan 2.1 and our earlier workflows. We also have different examples of upscaling and yeah, just a whole bunch more. So I'm always checking it out and I'd love to see what you guys create. All those links are going to be down in that description box. So you guys can get this right away and have fun experimenting with it. Anyways, I hope to catch you in the next one. Until next time. All right. Peace. Peace.